Hello and very warm welcome to Dr. Zia Ahmed's YouTube channel. I've been teaching the novel Moth Smoke to my students occasionally and this time as well I have been teaching them um, textual matters, critical matters and other characterization about the author, all these things I have been trying to teach my students. And so today I thought that some of the reflections which I think uh, must reach to my audience as well as to my students may be there. Math Smoke is the novel written by Mohsen Hamid in the 2001 onwards. This Math Smoke is really very fantasy type of novel, very beautiful novel and the narrative is going to be even more interesting. First of all, we need to talk about this novel that it is about the city of Lahore. I hope every one of us living in Pakistan especially know very well about Lahore. It's a very ancient city, sometime occupied by the Mughals and sometime by the Sikhs and ultimately sometime by the British occupiers. And lastly, it is under Pakistani government, but the kind of central place, the capital of the province of Punjab as well. Lahore, if looked at as far as its spaces are concerned, it has got two parts as any big Pakistani city can have that one part is old city and the other part is the modern Lahore. In the old city we have the narrow streets, we have the uh, houses adjacent to each other, very much congested population and having other civic problems as well. But then in such areas there is a very good interconnection of the people, of the families with each other. Sincerity level is higher in, in, in these areas. People may be doing smaller jobs, but their hearts are very big. On the other hand, we have the modern Lahore, which is surprised, scattered in the form of DHAs, in the form of other high sounding, highly guarded colonies where the rich and elite are living and they have the wider roads and streets and they enjoy the modern perks of life, they, they have the facilities of air conditioning and so many other things. But then the interaction of the families and the place is very little. Most of the time, even if a death takes place uh, around the neighborhood, people are very little to come to know about that. And the level of sincerity as well, it's uh, most of the time turned into something very much different. So uh, this is the Lahore. Lahore is the trustee to the culture that the Pakistani people are proud of. Like first of all, it is Anarkali and then it is the Shah Jahan Bagh and many other forts like the Red Forts and like not the Red Fort uh, that may be called Shahi Kila and uh, after that so many other things are there in Lahore, Minare, Pakistan for example. So in many ways, historically speaking, culturally speaking, development wise and the kind of business and the population of Pakistan which has evolved into it, that is the, uh, Lahore is the best representation. And in many novels like Bepsi Sidwa's Ice Candy Man and now it is Mohsen Hamid's Math Smoke and some other writers have also tried about that. Lahore is represented as a background, as a landscape, as the kind of, uh, we can say, appearance or representation of the people and the places within the formerly colonized countries. And now talking something about Math Smoke, very intriguing title. Math is definitely an insect and uh, when it burns itself around some light, maybe the light of the bulb, of the tube or in the modern context, it may be the LED bulb and then it could be the light of the candle and the moth burns. Actually, it's the light of the candle about which it should be mostly reflected because Shama and Parwana have some kind of uh, interrelation with in our literature and in our culture as well. In that sense, the matter of love also creeps in that moth becomes a type of lover and the candle is the beloved and moth knows that he will be lower once he enters into the area, hot area of the candle, when the flame of the candle is very hot and as soon as the moth touches it, definitely it's burnt out and the only thing left is the smoke. The writer has used this uh, analogy in order to interpret number of relationships inside the novel. The writer uses it uh, for, Ma, for Daru and uh, for uh, the wife of Uzi, that is Mumtaz, he tries to 
give an analogy in this relationship and ultimately goes to give the analogy to Uzi as well and the similar analogy is given by reversing it between Mumtaz and Daru as well. At least one of the person gets burned up, at least one of the person becomes mysterious and one of the person is unclear, one of the person whose history disappears, uh, either, either that of the moth or that of the candle, these things keep on happening. So the title of the novel is very intriguing in order to explain what is happening inside the novel. The stories of different people come across and because of these stories we are able to understand how the novelist has, has knit or possibly knitted the uh, network of the stories of the love of intrigues of of the corruption of the drugging of the other things going on by using this title of the math somehow definitely it can also be taken not only in the sense of the human relationship but also in the sense of anything which you like anything which you appreciate which you love and you feel that if it's it's love when fulfilled can give you a lot of comfort for example even it can be drug as well the drug attracts and the, the moth is attracted towards that, but everybody knows that after it touches the drug, what happens? What are the results of that? Only moth is left dead and the smoke is left dead. Uh, this moth smoke, uh, this, this intriguingness of the title has been discussed by the writer in number of chapters. For example, chapter 10 is very famous in this regard. Same is the case uh, with the chapter 12, 13, 14 as well. Because in these chapters, uh, the, the protagonist of the story, Daru, does not have power at his home, so electricity is not working, so he's using the candles. And many masks, therefore, come in the rainy season towards the candles. And not only they are automatically killed, but also uh, this, uh, this protagonist, Daru, has a racket, tennis racket. With the help of that, he also continues to kill the moths. So in that way, uh, these symbolic representations of the moth go to represent the stories of different people inside the text as well. And the next important thing is that we should confess that this novel is not about the common people of Pakistan. It is about the elite class of Pakistan, wherein they, uh, they live, they celebrate their life, they suffer, they occasionally happen to chastise themselves and others as well, and their whole way of life has been pointed out. I mean, how do they live, how do they construct their houses, and in what way they spend their money, and in what way they earn their money as well, and how do they look at the people, and I mean, these are all the questions which are very, very well, very definitely answered inside the text of Mahatsamaug. So we can say this novel is about the elite class of Pakistan, especially living in Lahore, and I must say that Lahore is a place where people from Pishar, people from uh, Balochistan, Quetta, people from Karachi, people from uh, the southern Punjab, they all uh, love to buy the houses and live in, in, in Lahore. So that is why telling the story of the elite class of Lahore is actually telling the story of the whole elite class of Pakistan. And in that way, very much difference will be found when when somebody reads this novel in order to see how struggle is very much important inside the lower and up lower and middle class but this struggle is equal to minimum and uh, money flows in very rapidly some of the people have invested money some of the people have factories some of the people have other businesses some of the people are laundering money and as a result lahore is the very place where money is a big game and whoever is capable of earning money that person becomes the elite class may be very well educated or not very well skilled or not but if the money is there definitely it happens like that so lahore represents this novel represents lahore's elite class well the corruption is all the time there in pakistani society and when uh, the writer mohsan hamid talks about the corruption among the elite class he is not one-sided at all. He talks about everybody. For example, he talks about the police, he talks about the judges and judiciary. He talks about the businessmen. He talks about the people who are in the banks and he talks about number of people as well where corruption is going on. So earning of money uh, in order to accumulate huge money, uh, in order to fill your purse with the money of the other people, that is the norm of the elite class and it continues to happen. Evading taxes, for example, evading the, the Islamic taxes, for example, or even evading any type of social work, they continue to accumulate money and so generate a huge gap between the upper class and then that of the lower and the middle class as well. In fact, the uh, upper class may be uh, taken in the sense that it's very good class, of course, but then it is doing something because of which uh, Pakistani morality becomes questionable. Because there is a moral depravity in this upper class. 
I don't know how Mohsen Hamid would like to take it and how the people, my audience would like to take it. But then uh, there is something uh, in the text which goes to show that morally this class is, you know, not having very good type of morals. For example, cheating husbands and wives is quite common and uh, they can rob the people through through the you know techniques and tricks of the money which they are possessing they are taking drugs as well they are taking wines as well they are using every fair and foul mean in order to enjoy their life and if they at all have to you know feel uh, feel good because of the uh, because of the problem which they can cause for the other people they would definitely do so and uh, unfortunately or fortunately there is no one to stop them as well so in this way problem is going on and the problem is going on very heavily rather we can we can say so in that way the moral depravity of the classes of the upper class has been pointed out for example if we look at the life of uzi he is doing everything in order to accumulate money if you look at the other people who are present in this uh, in this novel they are too earning money and if they are spending money they are spending on wrong things and they, they are just for the sake of enjoyment and everybody is uh, doing parties not in order to promote their friendships but but just to promote their businesses so in that way moral depravity is quite very much available in the upper class but on the other hand even after having the foreign uh, qualifications these people are very much superstitious that in the novel we see that uh, there is one multani woman and many of the people go to that multani woman in order to get their hands uh, you know lines read by her and then she should provide some type of advice to these people. So how a woman, how a person, whatever the qualification may be, can tell about your fortune and future, it's not possible at all. But then this is the situation which is definitely going on and on uh, in our country. And this type of superstitiousness has been pointed out by, uh, by the writer. We can see that uh, the, the woman, Mumtaz, who is well qualified, she is a journalist as well. Even then she visits this Multani Alima and, uh, and asks about the condition which she is possibly maybe having in future. So uh, most of the time it has been found that such rich elites, maybe in the politics, maybe out of the politics, maybe landlords, they are very much hungry in providing money to these peers, fakirs and these alims in order to know about their future and get rid of all these kind of bad things which they have been doing. So they are superstitious, very much superstitious as well. Similarly, if you proceed further, we can say that this elitism is causing frustration. This frustration is especially found among the common people. Definitely it's found there. But then common people have reconciled to their luck and so they uh, would love to continue their jobs and continue to do the things as, a, as and in whatever they want. But on the other hand, it is something uh, with the with the middle class people or the rich class people that they are so frustrated that they would if, if they fa face any difficulty they would turn to the drugs and the drug therefore finds a lot of way to their lives because they have the money and the drug provider definitely touches that person who's got a lot of money so in that way this frustration of the of the elite class is quite visible in this novel we can see that each and every person maybe Daru's class fellows maybe Daru's friends maybe Daru's uh, female friends, all of them want to enjoy these drugs and all of them want to, you know, lie after drugging themselves. They want to drink wine as well, as heavily as possible. This this thing is not going to show that somebody is going positive. It's supposed to show the frustrated class. But this, this frustration has caused the ruins of careers of so many, as is the career of this Daru, that he's also frustrated so much that uh, instead of doing anything positive, he's mostly busy in taking drugs into himself. And this drug has become so much common that there is no party mentioned in uh, in this uh, novel which is free of the drugs. But all types of drugs are available. You know, I don't want to talk about that. But whatever the modern, the old type of drugs, these are available to this class. But however, if the same things are found anywhere, the police will come and arrest the people and find them and punish them very heavily. But these elite people are doing the things which whichever they will like. So that this novel, Math Smoke, is the true representation one may question that, but still it is the representation of the elite class. And then the writer has used his uh, narrative in order to question the validity, authority and the power of the police as well. We know in the beginning chapters there is an incident where 
a policeman detects daru that he has taken wine and his mouth is smelling of wine but he does not arrest him instead he compromises with him by taking just 700 rupee and uh, lets him go so that is the way how uh, police system is going on if police is not checking such people then how it is possible that the uh, the evil doing drugging can be stopped no it's not possible at all same as the case with murad badshah who runs a rickshaw and runs the evil business of drugs and is never arrested by anybody because he is able to uh, uh, bribe the people who, who are the you know maintainers of law and order and so in that way police uh, it's its, uh, its role is being questioned here same is the case with judiciary that the man daru or uzi when they are traveling on road they have killed a boy but then there is no evidence available and because of that daru gets freedom in the absence of any evidence nobody comes forward to say that he saw this man doing so so well judicial system very great in pakistan but still it has got uh, to improve itself it has got certain things to do and then uh, this thing of uh, the elite class uh, is able to uh, you know create a type of competition uh, in the middle class and middle class becomes very much concerned about the problems which their sons and daughters can face because of this elite class we see in the novel we have family of daru they are quite good people they are very honest and uh, you know morally very strong people they uh, have their hobbies as well they have their small businesses as well they want to proceed further with their businesses they uh, they they are busy in their life and they are marrying and giving birth to their children and and if we compare this family with the family of uzi and even with daru there is nothing which is evil like in that family so the impression from the text of the novel comes that if they are there are evil things there are moral depravities these are most of the time available in the elite class the middle class is not mentioning anything like that for example even if we uh, try to compare daru's attitude with the the, the uh, sons of his cousin sons of his uncle we can see that daru uh, as as he's in touch with the elite class he thinks that still he can improve he can be the part of that he involves in every type of bad activity but on the other hand young boys from his family they are trying to run their small businesses they are trying to earn little money and they are trying to improve their skills as well through computer through other means through learning through online businesses everything they are doing so that goes to show that the middle class possibly maybe having a type of corruption in it as well but still it is not doing corruption so visibly that the writer has not included anything about that but on the other hand elite class is corruption of every way is pointed out very significantly very importantly that we are able to have a feeling that this novel is definitely about the corruption of the elite class people and then comes the technique of the novel the narratives it's very interesting with respect to the narratives all significant major characters have at least one chapter ascribed to them so it's very interesting to see first of all the view of the writer about these characters and then look at these very characters with the view of the other characters and ultimately you have a one chapter or two chapter dedicated to every major character for example first we look at uh, mumtaz through the eyes of uzi and through the eyes of daru but later on there is a full chapter uh, about mumtaz mumtaz kashmiri 10th chapter is there and she is the one who narrates her story same is the case with the stories of dara shikur same is the case with the story which uh, uzi describes then manusi describes the stories and the father and everybody who is significant even murad badshah's story is described in a different chapter so there are different angles of looking at different characters first through the eye of the writer then through the eye of the imaginative characters and then the character itself this is just equal to or just similar to the characterization and narrative provided by mohsen ham uh, provided by mohammad hanif in his novel red birds that every chapter is narrated by a different narrator so th th that's the way how the modern novel is coming up creating even more complexities to create more interest in the novel so uh, not only this mohsen hamid in this novel has given double titles to his chapters for example one series is complete telling us chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 but alongside these we have the other numbers as well for example the first numbering of the chapter is in digits the second numbering of the chapters is in the words like chapter 8 has 5 in it chapter 9 has 7 in it 
in that way whole book is divided so it also generates a type of curiosity what's the reason behind that so in order to view this one may one may say that there are sections of the book also and these uh, these uh, titles in writing go to prove the sections and the titles and digits go to talk about the chapter so that's a type of interesting thing done by the novelist uh, in in math smok there may be other reasons as well uh, thus the scholars are welcome to find it out and uh, give it a different interpretation but i could understand uh, just after reading this uh, i can i can give my views on that then it is the vocabulary very much interesting vocabulary has been used by the writer in math smok especially the vocabulary which is related to the drugs for example it is hairy uh, the use for heroin and then it is uh, h or ache that is the again the uh, some kind of drugs and then hash 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 for a sheesh or so many other you know words have been used so it is a way of observing the people it is the way of showing how the people talk about these things and how the people mention these things and the writer is trying to let us know how deep his observation of these people is going to be the way he takes us into the red light area of lahore and there he makes us meet uh, prostitute and how they have become so this again goes to show the power of observation of this writer so in this way it is the you know story of everyone every one of us especially if we are running behind money if we are the victim of the corruption of the society if we are the victim of the corruption and oppression of the society then these things keep on happening and writer has very cleverly uh, gone through all these things to make us realize and question these things which are going on very rapidly inside this text uh, so Uh, this novel has not only the elite class living in uh, in the cities but also some of the feudals which have been pointed out in it for example in the very beginning when daru is given red uh, you know ticket to go out of his job at that time maharaj even one landlord is responsible for that and again when daru is given huge beating because daru sold uh, you know drug to shahzad who was the son of you know a very big landlord he got him beaten very severely so severely that many parts of his body were broken and that's a proof of the power physical power financial power moral power and especially the social political power that these elites enjoy in our country and nobody is able to question them so uh, this uh, this again is the part of the elites elitism in our country money laundering though these days very much important topic that everyone is talking about money laundering but then in this novel also Uh, Uzi for example is involved in money laundering he confesses himself in his chapter and says that yes i am the money launderer so that was the best way of earning money and making dollars writer gives us the time when the uh, when the atomic bomb is tested uh, by pakistani authorities at that time number of large families number of elite families bought dollars by selling their rupee and sent this dollar outside and in that way the rate of dollar increased and the benefit went to these people when they brought their dollars back so this money laundering game has been going on forever and ever and most of the people who have an access to money surely middle class is not that access to money and same is the case with the lower class it is the upper upper class which has access to dollars as well as to the the rupee uh, so they 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 are involved in that so money laundering is one of the themes which the writer has taken there so writer was true in uh, the 2000s and now in 2021 this year again money laundering has become one of the top debates in this world everyone the uh, fatf uh, which is threatening pakistan in order to improve its status that also talks about the reducing of money laundering so it's a form of corruption that is again the part of the elite class in pakistan and so uh, continuing with these things the uh, one gets the bitter taste about pakistani society but then it's very much essential to understand what is going on around you the bitter taste i say because when a middle class young man reads this novel he is upset and disturbed on the one hand to see that how people in pakistan are or can be divided into air conditioned class and non air conditioned class within the ac and without the ac and the people whose kitchens are filled up with groceries and eatable materials and the people who don't have that so when he listens and finds out these things he is up to some extent frustrated as well how it is possible for him to reach that but then he finds out that corruption is responsible for that some of them possibly involved into it but some of them do leave that and it causes them a more frustration so the novel 
has a bitter taste with regard to all these things which are discussed inside the novel. But then some kind of poetic justice is there. Uh, for example, when we see in the novel that Uzi's father, Huram, has a relationship with the mother of Daru after the death of his father, Shizad. Uh, this thing is not so clearly mentioned, but then the visits, the going on dinners, and after that, Daru's ill feeling for Uncle Khurram and Khurram's way of getting the job for Daru, these things indicate that some type of friendship or some type of taking care may be there. And then the same thing happens with the son of Khurram, that his wife is having an affair with the very friend who was the school time friend of, of, of Uzi. And whoever is doing corruption, that person faces it in some way or the other. So the writer has given a type of poetic justice as well in the novel. But then overall, leaving aside all these things, these are some of the impressions. One may have a very good view about the novel that this is the novel which tells and talks about the elite class. And it is similar to exposing the elite class and letting the people know. So the writer has done a great job in, uh, in talking about these people and letting the common people of Pakistan know how much different is their life, how much uh, they are enjoying in their own way. Maybe it's not enjoying, maybe it's uh, accumulating some bad things for them. But still, it is the dream and desire of everyone in order to include, include into such a lifestyle which these people have. But then everything has its own tags. That if you enter into such a class, then definitely you have to do the things which they do. And uh, if you remain in your class, then definitely you need a type of contentment to stay there. So the uh, new liberalist society of the world has generated Lahore as also as the new liberalist society. And in a way, Lahore has become mini America. The way the struggle is to be made, but then the difference is also there. Regarding the comfort of life, and the way people enjoy their, the elite class especially. That may be uh, termed in the mini America, but then it is not like that because in America, if people are earning money, they have certain responsible attitudes as well. They follow the law as well. They try to work hard as well. And they go on charities as well. And they try to spread positivity in the world. But this thing is not present among the elites of flower. So in that way, it's very much different from, though it's new liberal society, money has become important. Yes, it's right. But then other morals which should have been accompanying these things and these efforts are absent. So some of my reflections on this novel, my students can, uh, you know, watch this video and uh, quote some of the lines or some of the themes which I have tried to reproduce here. Hopefully some more light has been thrown in the text for my students. They may be going through that and understanding these lines as well. Thank you very much for watching all this. It, it, it has been a great pleasure to be in connection with the people who watch this video. Thank you and that's it from me.